Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of 10,000 Worlds Financial Independence. Today, I have Dustin Miles. Dustin is a single dad that lives in Fort Worth, Texas. He started investing multifamily in 2012 with a total of 12 syndications and full cycle on seven of them. Dustin loves hiking and remains active. His hobby include traveling, playing soccer, running, and weightlifting. His two running goals are running one quarter miles in under 60 seconds and one mile under five minutes. That's awesome, Dustin. Uh, welcome to our show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We usually start at our show, Dustin, by asking our entrepreneurs who kind of, if you recall back in your childhood, who, or if there is an incident that kind of shaped the entrepreneur who you are today, the way that you're thinking. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if there was a entrepreneur in general, you know, I don't know, maybe I was a weird kid, but you know, I'd, I'd ride my bike around and, you know, kind of wonder, which I guess is kind of a weird thing to wonder about, but I'd wonder who owns all these, the large commercial properties who own the apartments, you know, who own the retail, the, the office buildings and, and all that. So, you know, I, for whatever reason, as a little kid, I don't know, in, in middle school and high school, I, I was uh, kind of, was always pretty interested in Ross Perot's life. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, kind of going back to, you know, your, your question though, I think the person that maybe, you know, helped influence me a little bit was, so I, I played soccer and still play soccer um, today, but when I was a little kid played soccer and, um, one of the people that I played soccer with, they, they own, um, a lot of the, they own a lot of, they own some skyscrapers in downtown Fort Worth and some other wow. commercial real estate. And, um, you know, I remember they it had a pretty profound, you know, effect on me. So I, I played soccer with their son. Um, and we were, you know, we were both, uh, pretty good and all that, but, um, I remember going to their house and they had a, a monster house, um, you know, like eight bedrooms or something, you know, like 12 yeah. bathrooms and all that. And uh, I just remember, you know, going to his birthday party's house and that had a pretty profound effect on me. And so I was like, oh, because I, you know, I would ride around wondering who owns all this stuff. I'm like, oh, these mm -hmm. guys do. Mm -hmm. And so that was, um, you know, pretty interesting to me. And, um, you know, I'm not, I don't feel I'm not materialistic or whatever, mm -hmm. but, um, but that, you know, having that exposure, I was like, oh, they're normal people. I mean, you know, they, they put their jeans on the same way everybody else does, but they're, you know, the shirts on, you know, it's not like they're, they're special or anything like that. And yeah. you know, I was just as good, um, as their son in soccer. So I'm like, okay, they're not special. They're just, you know, what, what they do to, to get there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like giving you kind of like the permission, giving yourself the permission and confidence of like, Hey, if they can do it, uh, perhaps, uh, I can do it too. Yeah. 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 It was it, the thought, you know, kind of going back. I mean, I don't know if I thought this or if I, you know, whatever, but I was always like, you know, why not me? Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing that special about them. No, no offense to them. So yeah. Yeah, it's that confidence. That's awesome. And Dustin, so you've been in syndication since 2012. Um, why multifamily? And uh, what was your kind of career path look like before you kind of get into this investment side of things? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. So I, I guess kind of just real quick background before investing and all that. So I, you know, I've always been entrepreneurial. I uh, was a little kid. I had a candy business, uh, lawn mowing business, bought and sold baseball cards. I threw a terrible carnival. <laughs> you know, if there was a way to make money, I was probably doing it. And in college, I had an e-commerce business. Um, this was back in the day of like Yahoo auctions. So yeah. I'm dating myself a little bit, but uh, yeah, made, you know, did, did okay there. I went to UT Austin for uh, engineering school. And then after that was, uh, was an engineer at a defense contractor for a number of years. But, um, after college, I started flipping houses and doing rentals and, you know, made, you know, I started that about 14 years ago. That was, you know, kind of 2008, 2009. And, you know, just happened to kind of buy at a pretty good time, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that really kind of taught me, I'm like, okay, this is cool. Uh, making a little bit of money, but I, I guess for me, the scalability, um, you know, seemed like a lot, you know, if I was going to go that single family route, 
So I started looking around and I looked at self-storage and, and, um, you know, looked at multifamily. And so, and I'd actually found, uh, there's a, you know, a mentoring group, um, called Lifestyles Unlimited. And, and, uh, I'd found, found them, um, and, uh, you know, started, you know, educating myself on multifamily. And so it became pretty mm-hmm. intriguing. And then, and then I met, met some different people within that group and outside of that group that, that owned, you know, multifamily. I remember, you know, for, for me, I knew people who owned like 10 houses and that was kind of, mm-hmm. kind of my, my ceiling, and then I remember I met a guy, uh, he owned like 40 units and he lived mm-hmm. in Dallas and, you know, which now probably sounds really small to most people listening to this, but, um, at the time he was the person I knew that owned the most. And so mm-hmm. he owned 40 units. He was, lived in Dallas and this is in Oklahoma and kind of, uh, but- kind of blew my mind. I'm like, wow, how are you, you know, how are you doing this? And then met some other people. I owned 50, a hundred units. And I had lunch with a guy that, you know, owned 10,000 doors, uh, not mm-hmm. too long after that. And so, you know, again, it's kind of that, you know, why not me? I'm like, you know, they're, you know, they're smart people don't want to take anything away from them. But, you know, I'm like, if, you know, no offense to them, but if they can do it, I, you know, I, it, that gave me the confidence of I can do it too. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Just to kind of seeing, cause there's, reinventing the oil in this business but then there's also you don't really need to reinvent so many wells as long as you know the right people and know the house to do it and most importantly it's like the who can help you do that um so what is your first uh transaction like you know how did you get to your from zero to one uh from the multifamily perspective because that's a lot of listeners are just kind of wondering like okay, how do I make the transition? Some maybe invest into some single family stuff before, some maybe passively invest it into it. So what is your first deal like? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I think you kind of hit it on the head. Uh, honestly, you know, it's it's the, you know, who, not how. And I guess I wish I would have learned that uh, sooner. <laughs> but, but you know, I so about 10 years ago, uh, so I was a, a KP ideal and, you know, I was basically passive. Um, invested passively in a few other deals. So, um, you know, I did first syndication uh, where I was, you know, captain of the ship uh, in 2004. And, you know, I was, I was part of mentoring group. So, you know, that, that helped. Um, and then, you know, but I, I think, you know, as much of, of anything was, you know, it wasn't just me, it was, I was partnering up with, you know, with a few other people. I was partnering up with one guy, um, who had a little more experience than I did. And then I was partnering up with some other people who, who had, you know, some balance sheet, you know, that they could offer. I, I didn't, you know, didn't have uh, a whole lot. Mm-hmm. And um, so it was really, it's really just, you know, about putting together a team. I mean, like I mentioned, I played soccer, you know, my whole life and, and used to, you know, kind of be in, in that team scenario. And, and so for me, it really, it felt pretty comfortable. I'm like, okay, I'm just going, I'm just playing a different sport, not mm-hmm. to, you know, uh, not to truly trivialize anything or, or downplay it. Uh, Cause it, it's, you know, hard and it's a lot of work and it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's very serious and there's a lot of money involved, but to me, I'm like, okay, this is, you know, a team scenario. I'm used to playing on a team in soccer. And, and so, you know, your position and you, you know, you make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. And so, mm-hmm. you know, this is another team, another sport where, you know, try to, you know, try to kind of stay in your swim lane and, and, you know, do, do what you're supposed to be doing and, and trying to enable the rest of your team to win. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. It's like a team sports um, because you did flip homes before. So yeah. that's a very interesting um, perspective and transition. Um, would you say being a flipper? Because I always say this, that sometimes uh, when people in the conference, they come up and they ask advice like, hey, we flip houses. You know, what, what is going to stop us doing the multifamily? Where do you see the most challenges in getting transition into multifamily? Well, it's actually yourself perhaps is the biggest one because being a flipper, if you're volume flipper, you got a team. But in general, if you just said normal mom and pop flipping, uh, you're kind of looking more like, okay, like I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm like managing my contractors and this and that. So transitioning that from the me to team is a big thing. What would you have advice for folks who are currently maybe doing single family homes, flippings, transition into like a multifamily? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess just kind of to zoom out a little bit, just, you know, advice for this probably would go for, you know, for anybody, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, so I, you know, try and try and put your ego aside for sure. You know, no one, no one wants to, no one, you know, I, I think the pandemic and COVID and all that was a, you know, a, a very interesting time and all that. I remember watching some seminars or some webinars where there were guys that, you know, um, that own 20, 30, 40, 50,000 units. And it was very interesting um, to see them. You know, everybody's like, hey, where do you think this is going? What what should we do? Blah, blah, blah. And basically everybody, you know, all, the whole panel is like, ah, we, we don't know. You know, <laughs> yeah. we're just trying to trying to be conservative, hold on to cash. And 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 we're trying to navigate this like, like anyone else. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I think trying to, you know, keep the ego aside. Um, if you're brand new and you've never, never done multifamily, you know, mm-hmm. I, I think the biggest thing uh, or another big thing would be, you know, you, you know, you got to believe in yourself and, and um you know, that you can do it. And, you know, if, if, you know, if, if in your head, you know, uh, all this just like sports is, is such a, such a mind game. I mean, if you don't believe you can do it, well, you probably never will. So, right. um, and, and plus, if you don't believe you can do it, why should anybody else believe you can, you can do it? So, right. um, you know, I think there's, you know, just kind of believing in yourself, um, you know, kind of setting yourself up to win, whether that's, you know, hiring a coach or partnering, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in, you know, I have a few different coaches for, for different things. I have a, you know, coach for, um, for, uh, weightlifting. I have a coach for running. Um, I have a you know, coach for nutrition. Cause I'm not, I try to, I stay in my swim lane. Yeah. Um, I don't know those other things as well. I don't dedicate, you know, 40 plus hours a week to that. I lean on those people because they have, you know, 10, 15 plus years of experience. And so I can, you know, um, I mean, there, it's not, you know, free for the most part, but mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I, I pay them. And so they, they help me there. And, and then I can kind of, you know, avoid, um, you know, big pitfalls and things like that. And that's, you know, partnering can, can do that. Um, and, and so can hiring a coach. And that's a, a quick, quick way to get from A to Z with, uh, you know, without, you know, um, you know, getting in the ditch or anything. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, speaking about ditch, you know, I'm kind of curious, you know, is there a deal that you wish to cook on a different direction? Um, but you learned kind of like so much from it. So like, is there something that you can share with our audience over here? I'm, I'm guessing going through COVID, there's probably a lot of challenges, uh, gotta have to work through. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this, this one deal, uh, was, was not, um, we sold it before COVID and all that. Um, but, uh, it, uh, yes, this one deal, it was in, uh, in Oklahoma is in, uh, it's called Aspen walk. It was actually the guy we sold it to. Um, he just sold it pretty recently. So, mm-hmm. um, and I was, I was actually up there not too long ago. I went by there. I was just kind of curious to, I hadn't been by there in a few years, but uh, yeah, with that deal, I mean, that really, you know, we, we thought the area was better uh, than, than it was. And um, so we, we struggled from, uh, you know, from an income perspective, you know, the, mm-hmm. you know, we did well on the expense side, but the income side, we just really struggled. Uh, we, we changed out not the management company, but we changed out different managers and uh, didn't really matter who we, we plugged in the, mm-hmm. the area, you know, was what it was. And uh, it was kind of a, you know, a little, you know, there, there's, you know, some bad debt and delinquency that's, you know, it's typically um, is what we saw at that property uh, for, you know, for the area and all that. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we, we went in um, and we, we did, you know, ended up doing okay on the deal, you know, and we met, met Performa uh, on that deal, uh, fortunately. And, uh, and we didn't have any cap rate compression either. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot of the deals, everybody's, you know, and we, we benefit from it too. Mm-hmm. You know, I doubled everybody's money in yeah. 18 months and you're like, okay, well you, you Good. bought a six cap and sold it a four. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. but we, we bought it an eight cap and sold it in eight caps and so no cap rate compression there. But, uh, fortunately, you know, we had, you know, we had, two, two pretty big things that kind of went in our favor. Um, and, and we underwrote this, you know, originally we did a mm-hmm. water conservation and we saved, 
saved a whole lot of uh, yeah. money there, uh, about 50% savings there. And then we did, they had a cable contract where uh, no one else provided free cable in the area. Mm -hmm. And we knew when that cable contract was up. And so we ended up saving uh, about 42,000 bucks a year, which mm -hmm. it was a smaller deal. Yeah. And, um, you know, 42,000 bucks a year on that deal is quite a bit. I was uh, at an eight cap. That's, you know, we, uh, we made about half a million bucks yeah. just off of that. Mm -hmm. So we made, you know, uh, and the raise is on 1.5 million. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's 30% return right there. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I love kind of, you just touched a lot of the complex concept over there in terms of, uh, you know, how uh, multifamily is evaluated. It's usually using a multiplier to cap rate. Um, and by improving, uh, by reducing your expenses, it saves the bottom line. So it's a hundred percent improvement versus the often value at People are looking at it's like, you know, the traditional, oh, update the interior and, and jack up the rents and this and that. That's determined by the market, whereas expenses is something that uh, if you see where you're saving them, it's determined by the operator creating value. That's awesome. And then so, you know, given the current market condition, there's a lot of volatility in the market condition and the rates increase and et cetera. What are you doing to kind of adjust your business plans and et cetera? versus what you were doing past couple, like five years or so um, to kind of embrace the changes in the market? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's always going to be, you know, challenges, you know, whether, I mean, you know, we bought a deal two years ago. And so the challenge was COVID, what was going to happen? You know, people, mm -hmm. people didn't really know. Um, we, we had, we thought the economy was, was, you know, going to go, uh, we, you know, didn't know it was going to go to this extent, but we, yeah. we thought it was going to improve. And uh, so, I mean, what we're doing now, I mean, so you have, you know, it depends on where you're buying and all that you have, uh, you know, different volatility, you know, we have insurance, uh, property taxes, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're in Texas. And so property taxes are a big thing here. And then, um, you know, obviously we have interest rate, um, you know, risk. And so, um, you know, there, there's a few different ways that, that you can, you know, uh, you can kind of tackle, you know, interest rates. I mean, one, one option could be, you could sit on the sidelines, mm -hmm. um, and, and just kind of, you know, let it, let it play out. Um, you know, we, we have, you know, we're, we're trying to, uh, just, you know, we try to mitigate our risk and de-risk the deal as, as much as we can on, on the interest rate side and just try to be, you know, try to be conservative. And then, you know, like the deal, you know, mentioned, um, you know, location is, uh, you know, it, it sounds very simple, but it's extremely important, mm -hmm. you know, of the variables that you can change, you know, you can't change location. You can throw a bunch of money into a deal, but, right. you know, if, if you're trying to, make it if it's a C deal and you're trying to make it a B deal, it doesn't matter how much money you you know throw into if it's a C area. And so, you know, just trying to be real careful about, you know, what what deals we uh we get into and you know gotten gotten a lot better, you know, about that. And uh, you know, we have there's a lot more tools available too, um, mm -hmm. online and otherwise that that help out with that quite a bit too. So mm -hmm. and so how do you pick locations? Like since we're kind of talking about it, you know, how do you suggest people to kind of look at locations, some of the gotchas, um, for example, thinking back at the properties that you owned before location was worse than you think it was like, what would you kind of do differently? You know, how do you actually pick locations? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, we, we look at the stuff we're looking at right now is, is kind of your, you know, A minus B plus variety. So we don't have to worry about crime as much mm -hmm. on those, but, um, but we do, you know, we do look at crime just to make sure that uh, that looks okay. Um, but, uh, you know, we're looking at, you know, access, you know, can you actually find the property? Some of the, you know, from Google street view and all that, or just a Google map, you're like, Oh, it looks like it's a good location. Then you drive by and you're like, where is it? I don't know. So, you know, we, so we're looking at, you know, uh, visibility, we're looking at location of schools, we're looking at, we're looking at school ratings, we're looking at home values, and then, 
you know, comparing that to, to rents and things like that. So mm-hmm. we've gotten, um, gotten a lot, lot more sophisticated. Um, you know, I'd say, especially over the last two years, um, there was, you know, uh, one, one good thing about, about COVID is uh, deal flow, uh, I guess, good or bad, but, you know, deal flow kind of went away that mm-hmm. summer. And so, we did a whole lot of, re- we didn't just sit around, we were doing a whole lot of research and we were mm-hmm. trying to, you know, constantly get better. And so we've kind of developed some, uh, so what came of that besides doing a webinar, a few webinars a week, and we mm-hmm. got really good at that, um, yeah. was we, you know, developed some tools that can help us, you know, better analyze. And so some of them are, you know, what I kind of touched on as far as, you know, comparing, you know, home values to rent and what that looks like over time. Uh, mm-hmm. We do look at household income. Yeah. Um, household income can be a little deceiving though. So for instance, if household income that you have is from 2019, but they just mm-hmm. put in a bunch of, you know, new subdivisions that may not be, you know, all that accurate or, you know, sometimes if you just look at the one mile, but within the one mile, you're surrounded by a bunch of retail yeah. then it may not be as accurate. So um, you know, we, we look at a lot of those things, um, you know, uh, they're not always, uh, super black and white. There's a lot of gray there. So there yeah. is still a little bit, you know, of an art to it, I'd say, but, uh, you know, but those are a lot of the things that, that we look at. Um, and then we, you know, um, there's some deals that we've looked at that are right, right on the freeway. And so, mm-hmm. you know, we, we drove it or we toured it we're like, man, I would, you know, if, if I put my tent hat on, I'm like, I wouldn't want to live here. It's, it's too loud. Yeah. Um, or, you know, we looked at some deals that looked like they were in a pretty good location, but one, this one deal I was thinking of, um, actually a pretty decent area, mm. uh, but there was a motel on each side of it mm. and so you drove by and, you know, not to be whatever, but there's a lot of foot traffic right there. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, if I'm looking at that complex versus another one where there's no foot traffic, right. foot traffic, I'm going over there. So, right. so anyways, just try to be smart about it. Obviously if there's, if it's next to schools or churches and things like that, um, which generally brings stability to an area. We, we like things like that a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great, great, uh, wise, uh, wisdom to share for sure. Um, and so Dustin, um, you mentioned you're mostly concentrated in Texas, most of your property is in Texas. Yeah. And why do you kind of particular pick that market? Um, and, um, uh, yeah. And wh- why do you generally kind of pick uh, that? Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're here, so I'm in DFW and then, um, our, my business partner is from Houston, but lives in DFW now. And so mm-hmm. kind of our, our two, uh, main markets right now are you know houston and dfw houston uh frankly we, we have more traction down there mm-hmm. um you know numbers are not quite as tight as they are in dfw so you mm-hmm. know we we like austin and san antonio as well but uh we're just not not that active there but uh yeah we like like houston and dfw quite a bit you know they both those metros led the led the country in terms of growth the past 10 years and that's only supposed to continue for the next 10 so you know, yep. we're, we're here, um, all of our, you know, resources are in both those markets. So it makes a whole lot of sense for us to, you know, focus on those two. Definitely. And then obviously as a syndicator, a lot of people always ask the question of like, where do you come up with the capital? Cause not only you have to find a deal, the deal flow was really difficult to kind of build when someone first started in this. Um, but also finding a capital, it's always the money or the, uh, the, the deal. So can you share a little bit more? you know, where do you find a success in terms of, you know, in, uh, raising your capitals and et cetera? Uh, yeah. I mean, we have, you know, uh, been doing it a little while so that, you know, that helps too. having a little bit of a track record helps. And then, um, you know, we, we network quite a bit. We, you know, we host events and all that. And so that, you know, uh, helps we, we, you know, we do, uh, online and in person. Um, and then, you know, we have, have a Facebook group and so that, that helps to, um, so it's just kind of, you know, there's not really a, a silver bullet, you know, for anything we do have, you know, some team members that, you know, uh, that, that, you know, help us with a few other things and, 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 you know, capital's one of those. So, um, 
you know, we have just a, you know, it's a, it's team sport and, uh, you know, so that uh, helps, but, uh, it's, you know, it's a bunch of different things, you know, we're, you know, we're, you know, just constantly kind of putting ourselves out there and, and trying to, you know, uh, just meet, you know, meet with good people and kind of the, uh, slogan that, uh, my business partner, um, you know, put together is, you know, we're just looking to do good deals with good people and, um, you know, kind of let the rest uh, follow. Yeah, definitely. That's a great slogan. And what do you see yourself three, five years from here, whatever midterm is for you? I mean, we know your immediate goal was about running, um, as we had talked about before. Yeah. Um, what, where do you see kind of your midterm in terms of this thing is taking you or life is taking you? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I guess, you know, it's a, there's a lot, a lot of things that I could could go off in a bunch of different uh, angles, but, uh, you know, more on the personal side, I've also, you know, been, um, you know, running and then gotten into weightlifting. So, you know, got to have some more immediate, you know, goals on, on that side. Mm -hmm. And then um, as far as business perspective, you know, we're, we want to grow, you know, we're open to, you know, kind of goal is to do, you know, two to four deals this year. So, um, you know, hoping to, you know, hoping to be, you know, kind of close to that. And then, uh, you know, we'd like to build a, like to build a decent sized company and, and, uh, just be able to provide value to, to, to other people and, and, uh, improve the communities. You know, we try to do, you know, fun events at the communities. I mean, our expenses, you know, are, you know, hundred grand plus, um, a month generally depends on the size of the property. And, and mm-hmm. so, you know, for us to spend a few hundred bucks and kind of give back to the community through food trucks or snow cones and things like that, you know, it's a, mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. Um, we're putting a decent amount of capital into the properties. We're improving them. Um, you know, we, we do, you know, we are raising rents, um, mm-hmm. as well, kind of with, you know, with market, but, um, you know, just trying to do, do the right thing, uh, take care of our, our staff and all that, you know, for their birthdays, we, you know, send them, uh, you know, chocolate flowers, you know, food, whatever, uh, just mm-hmm. try to, you know, uh, show that we care. And then, yeah. And then, you know, like I said, just kind of take care of our residents, take care of our, uh, investors. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, we do, uh, yeah, everybody does different things and all that, but just, you know, we pride ourselves on, you know, communication and all that. And then, um, mm-hmm. the only other thing I'd say is, you know, we, we do, you know, uh, we're on, you know, some podcasts, we do webinars and stuff, just trying to, you know, I didn't know, um, you know, 10 years, I guess longer than 10 years ago, I didn't know, you know, normal people could invest in, in apartments. I thought you had to be ultra rich or something like that. And so, right. you know, we talk to people every day where they're like, Oh, didn't know you could do this. I'm like, yeah, right. it's, you know, it's a really it's, cool vehicle. Yeah. It's good. Uh, good vehicle. So, um, you know, I know you're, you're part of, uh, you know, kind of, um, you know, reaching out to folks and all that. So just, yeah, just trying to, you know, improve uh, communities where we can and, and uh, do the best we can, with what we got. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's really about building the communities and, and better everybody's lives around us um, as landlords, essentially, that owns more units. And how many units do you have right now, uh, Dustin? Roughly? Uh, I've done, yeah, uh, I, I don't have a, a super impressive unit count, but I've done about, you know, 2000 units um, over the yeah. past years. I've sold uh, seven of those complexes. So I have about a thousand units right now. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot. Uh, and I mean, when you think about the impact from there, it's like a one person or, you know, a couple of people that's running these things. And then that impacted like a thousand people's life. If you're looking at that, uh, yeah. plus the investor's life that you touched, it's really uh, about building the communities for sure. Um, yeah. And then, so, uh, we, we often ask this question too, is we know we understand you have a child and then what are you doing today to kind of bring it full cycle for our episode over here? What are you doing today to help your kids to be more financially prepared and f- financially literate, um, for as they grow up? Yeah. Uh, so he's, uh, so his, his name's, uh, Henry and he's, he's 10. So he's just starting to you know, I think, uh, starting to get kind of cognizant of some of this stuff, but, uh, you know, we, uh, the, the properties that we bought in Houston, we have two of them right now. So they're actually, uh, they're actually named after him. So 
Uh, I was going to ask because <laughs> I saw the property. Yeah, name. so they're, yeah. they're called the Henry at, at something. And um, so, you know, and he's he's been to him and all that. So, you know, uh, so try to, you know, try to kind of, he sees a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, I haven't really started talking numbers um, a ton with him. Mm-hmm be honest, but, uh, I have a, a few nieces and nephews and all that. And so I opened, actually opened up, uh, they technically are not owners cause they're not, um, not adults, but I'd opened up an LLC. And so, and they all have access to, uh, so they're an investor in, in our last cool. deal. Um, so they have, they have access to the portal. They have access to, you know, all the financials and all that, um, yeah. on the deal we, we closed a few months ago. So, um, the, the plan, so my nieces and nephews and, and my son are part of that. So they, they range in age, uh, now, now two years old up to, uh, up to 14 years old. And so, um, kind of the plan was for the, the older kids to, you know, maybe once a quarter get on a zoom call and just walk through the financials. And, and so kind of the, you know, the hope with is, the two-year-old, <laughs> I love it. well, I don't know if we're, yeah. I don't know if we're getting too far with him, but, um, with, uh, with my son and I have, uh, so there's a 10, 11 and then 14. So with those three, you know, might, might, uh, you know, be able to kind of start making an impact and all that. So, um, but yeah, kind of the, the goal is to do, do something kind of quarterly and kind of run through the financials and just kind of, you know, so they know what's, what's going on. Um, and, uh, you know, so they, they know what NOI is and, um, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, what That's was, awesome. uh, you know, pitch through flat roof answered, you know, all that, all that stuff too. So, um, awesome. or is, oh, is this all bills paid or, you know, is that chiller? Do you have individual <laughs> what's going on? So. I can just like imagine a 14 year old going on the side and be like, oh yeah, this is a pitch flat. Like, yeah. what? it's got a chiller, you know, <laughs> this yeah, surprise yeah, of people's yeah. face. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Um, and uh, lastly, Dustin, I know like a lot of people, a lot of the listener viewers uh, on their show would have this in mind, which is, um, you know, the market's kind of going a little bit volatile and et cetera as an investor i know like multifamily is our favorites we obviously continue to invest in it uh what are some of the assets or what are some of the gotchas um that you would advise our investors to kind of watch out for uh you know do you really do you think uh there's a lot more leg rooms in terms of multifamily developments in this cycle yeah I mean, I, I guess I'll start off my disclaimer is my, my crystal ball, if I had one broke a long time ago. So, um, you know, continue to, to be surprised on, on where things go, but, you know, I, you know, probably, uh, you know, 70% of my wealth is, is multifamily. I'm in, in some mm-hmm. other stuff too. Uh, it's mainly all syndication stuff. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of exposure to the, to the market, but, uh, plan to kind of, you know, change that a little bit this year, but, um, you know, in terms of, you know, so if I'm looking at, I invest passively with some other people too. And so I, I look at, you know, and I, I believe, you know, in, in multifamily, um, I know you invest in, in, uh, you know, Arizona and all that. And, mm-hmm. um, so I'm not as familiar with Arizona, but, uh, so I, I can only speak from a Texas perspective, but mm-hmm. you know, there's lots and lots of growth. Um, I know Phoenix is always like, you know, uh, top of the charts as well. So, um, you know, believe in multifamily people, everybody needs a place to live. You know, there's, mm-hmm. there's inflation, you know, real estate kind of hedges, you know, against that. Um, you know, they're everything that I've seen and, and we look, we, you know, we're on webinars with, uh, with, you know, all the economics folks and all that, um, Mm -hmm. you know, the the gap between, you know, home prices and rent, uh, from Mm -hmm. what was displayed, uh, last this week, no, last week was that gap is widening. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, so in interest rates are going up. So your first time, your first time home buyer, it's going to be more and more difficult to go buy, Mm -hmm. um, which means more people are going to rent. And so, um, you know, and there's, there's, uh, people right now, you know, can't, you know, uh, can't build fast enough. And there, there's some cities that, that have, it's more prohibitive, uh, red tape to, to build in than others, even within Texas. 
Right. And um, so I don't know, you know, really, really believe in, uh, in, you know, in Texas, I don't, can't speak for the other, you know, markets and all that, but we, Mm -hmm. you know, really, really bullish on multifamily, Um, you know, everybody needs a place to live and Mm -hmm. um, it's a, you know, it's a need, you know, everybody needs food, water and shelter. And uh, so, you know, really, really like multifamily, but you know, I'm, I'm passive and, you know, some other, other things as well. So, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Um, well, thank you so much, Dustin, for today's time. And how does our listener and viewer reach out to you? How do they find out more about, about you and the way you do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you can reach out to me. Uh, so I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Dustin W. Miles. Uh, I'm on Instagram, just Dustin.Miles. Or uh, my email is Dustin at Momentum Multifamily dot com Mm -hmm. awesome and then of course your website momentum multifamily.com as well we're going to put that on our show notes so you can reach out to that you do not need to remember them um because we're going to put that over there um well thank you so much for your time today dustin and uh, this concludes our other episode of Ten Thousand words financial independence thank you so much thank you 